All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of PR Yourself with Leah Frazier. I'm back with a very, very special guest. I have not told him, but I am a fangirl. I have read the weight backwards and forwards, then backwards and forwards again. And I was on his team, your book launch team for the Success Commandments. And so this very special author, oh, and producer, yes, you. I wasn't going to tell you until now. <laughs> So I'm very happy to welcome Devon Franklin to the show. I mean, he's all things inspiration, um, has written so many New York Times bestselling books. He's back today with a brand new book on sale May the 4th called Live Free. We all need this right now. All right. I mean, let me just tell you. So just welcome so much to my podcast. And thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And I had no idea you were on the, <laughs> the launch team. So thank you for your support. You're very welcome. And I, I will say, you know, sometimes it's a little bit unnerving, but you're very active on social. You know, sometimes you get a part of these launch teams and you don't know, and you were just retweeting everything. And it was making me jack to tell people about <laughs> your book. So um, oh, good. The, real deal, the absolute uh, real deal. I love it. I'm, I'm listen, I'm, I'm excited about everything I do. So just, you know, I, Hey, if someone else is excited too, I'm like, Oh, yo, we can, we can do it. Let's go. <laughs> so what's, what's been going on um, during the pandemic? Like what have, what have you been working on? What's, what's life like right now for you? <laughs> um, you know, listen, I mean, I think like everyone else, you know, um, the pandemic brought with it, uh, you know, challenges and opportunities. Um, you know, the challenge of not being, able to move in the way that, you know, we all were accustomed to, and then the opportunity to, you know, really rediscover uh, who we are and, and what life's about, what direction we want to go in. And so for me, you know, obviously my heart goes out to everyone that lost someone, you know, during the pandemic. Um, you know, and with that being said, you know, for me, it's been a great time of reflection and a great time of just reorienting, like, who I am and what I want to do. And, Am I going in the right direction? And so being able to kind of recalibrate, I guess, is a better way to put it. And uh, that recalibration has been great and, um, you know, really, really eye opening. And, and it's just given me a lot of clarity uh, on uh, which direction I want to, you know, go in and, uh, and really giving me the confidence to, you know, pull away from certain things and lean into other things. So Devon then, when all this started, so Devon yeah. now, totally different person or just like, Devon 2.0? Uh, I would say more of a 2.0. I wouldn't say completely <laughs> different. You know, I'm, I'm still who I am, uh, but, you know, hopefully becoming a more realized, fuller version of who I am. I love what you were saying about um, just like the personal professional growth, because there was this meme that was going around when the pandemic first started. And it was like, if you're, if you're not writing a book or you're not starting your business mm -hmm. and you're not doing this while you're in quarantine or in isolation, then then what are you doing? Mm. So it's kind of like, eh, but we don't know what people are struggling with. That's right. That stop them from producing. But I think one of the cool things about you, I was just kind of cracking up when I linked up with your team where I was like, well, not only did he write a full book, <laughs> <laughs> but the book in and of itself is like literally like 200, 200 well over 250 pages. And I'm like, Devon went to work. And not just for you, for all of us. And so wow. what, what did you have to muster up to produce during a time where so many people, they just couldn't bring themselves to do it? Yeah, you know, it was really about, um, you know, mustering up the, the courage, first and foremost. Um, and then also, you know, uh, to hitting what you said on the meme, and then I'll come back to the book for a minute. You know, it's, it's, you know, on social media, it's such a, um, a medium that can do a lot of positivity, but can also do a lot of damage. And so memes like that to me are damaging if they produce this, this negative feeling of, oh, I'm not doing enough or I'm not enough for, if it feels, if it produces shame, you know, to me, that's, that's not, no, it's like, no, everyone has their own journey. And for some, the pandemic was, it was designed to just get you to pause and stop and not do anything because maybe you were doing too much. Um, and everyone has the journey of what that meant to them. And so seeing memes like that, and then, you know, someone being tempted to judge themselves 
uh, to me makes me sad because we all are on a journey in figuring this thing out. And so for me, you know, I had already set up this book before the pandemic. It just so happened that when the pandemic hit, it gave me the time to, to, to write it. And um, what I wanted to talk about was the same. You know, I was always going to talk about expectations. And it just so happened we were experiencing a time when all of our expectations were being upended. And, um, and so it took the courage, it took candor, you know, and transparency. You know, I did not write this book from a standpoint of, oh, I figured it all out. You know, I wrote the book from a standpoint of like, we all have this feeling of who we want to be and where we want to go. And a lot of us feel a little held back. We feel restricted. Uh, we don't feel as successful as we like to feel. Uh, we're not going everywhere we would like to go. Uh, and, and a lot of that has to do with expectations. And we don't even, a lot of times we don't even realize it. So I wanted to write the book for it to be a, you know, an aha moment to say, oh, wow. So, oh, it's my expectations that are running my life. Oh my goodness. Okay. How do I get control of that? So it really required the, the, the confidence, the candor, um, and then really wanting to just connect with uh, the reader in, in a very dynamic way. And that process was difficult. I mean, writing is hard. Um, you know, I, I had a co-author who helped me and even with the help, it's hard. It's really, really hard because I'm one of those writers. I'm in it. I'm in every word, every sentence, all of it. You know, I just don't hire somebody and tell them to go write a book and, and I put my name on it. I don't, I don't know how to do that. Um, so it, it was a difficult process, but I'm, I'm proud of it. And, and hopefully it'll, it'll touch people who read it. So it's called Live Free. Subtitle is Exceed Your Highest Expectations. We'll get into a little bit of the four different realms that you touch upon. And then we'll even get down to this word expectation. But for you, because I, I guess I thought it was COVID that kind of sparked this, but you're saying there was, yeah. you know, this was before. Before. So what? What incident or was it a set of incidences or what sparked within you where or or was it a circumstance where you said, I have to get this out? Um, when did you realize that you had those expectations that maybe were prohibiting you to live free? Yeah, you know, because I was just looking at how I was feeling, you know, and a lot of times I was just feeling um, frustrated and disappointed and, you know, feeling less than and all of it. So I'm like, man. Where are all these feelings coming from? Going? Because like I know. Like outside everybody's like Devon is like, and you even talk about it in the book where maybe people put you on this pedestal, like, and you have those expectations for yourself of being perfect, but you are the person that people look to for hope and inspiration. Yeah. And when we have those individuals, we don't associate them with, oh, they're human beings too, and maybe they have <laughs> right. things that they struggle with. So I was very shocked, like. Yeah wait a minute, the transparency, yeah. he's a perfectionist. He's down right. with himself. I never oh, yeah. thought these things. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to be honest and transparent. You know, it's like, yo, here's the stuff I'm dealing with. Here's what I'm going through. You know, here's what I'm navigating. And, um, you know, and, and again, like something I tried to articulate in the book is that, you know, I have a a uh, very big vision for my life and who I am and, and the service that I, I offer and a greater service I believe I can offer. So while all those things are great, they can also become tortuous if, they, if, if they're allowed to be. So for me, you know, the wanting to be and the wanting to grow, like at times, which is so like, oh, you know, so even with all the success, it's never enough, it's never enough. So as I perpetually got to the place where I was just experiencing a lot of disappointment, I said, well, what's happening, right? Because, you know, I'm doing well, I am successful, you know, like, you know, I'm, I know that, you know what I mean? So what's the problem? And then what I realized, I said, oh, the problem is my expectations. Mm -hmm. I have these expectations that if I don't meet them, I'm devastated. And not only if I don't meet them, if, if I don't meet them, then I judge myself. Then I say, oh, you know, you're not good enough and you're not who you think you are and all of these negative things. And so as I started to have the revelation about myself, a lot of people who were coming to me for help were, were expressing similar um, symptoms. And then I was like, oh, we all have the same problem. It's expectations. And then that's when I realized, oh, expectations are the secret software running all of our lives. So we're not reacting to the events of reality we're reacting to what we expected of reality so if something goes above our expectations we're happy 
If something doesn't hit our expectations, we're devastated. If someone does meet our expectations, we love them. If someone <laughs> doesn't meet our expectations, we're tired of them. And so as a result, it was like, wait, if we can set our expectations and get control of expectations, that then might become a better lens to which we imbue our entire life. So maybe if our life stayed the same, but our expectations were set, we would see things completely different. That was why I wrote this book. And this is why I'm so passionate about it. And I, and I love that you did it. I, I think the drop is timely. So God does everything yeah. at the right time because when everybody had to go through this isolation period or quarantine, what's the one thing we're doing? We're connecting digitally. And so if you had that expectation, and this is just my opinion, and you're on your devices all day long, because that's the only thing that you can connect with, then maybe the, all of these, these feelings of, you know, maybe I'm not worthy enough or my value is enhanced because what are you doing all day is looking at other people's yeah. stuff or it's magnifying all of those symptoms that you said you need to work on. Totally, <laughs> totally, totally, 1,000%. And so now you guys can work on yourselves at home because you've got a book to be able to do it. That's it. I, I love because you have reflection pieces after every single chapter. So it's definitely not anything that I would rush through. You would definitely want to unpack. But moving right along, uh, we've seen a lot of things kind of come up during the pandemic, uh, mental health issues, uh, people struggling with anxiety, um, um, like you've coined, like unnecessary stress. So before they even approach your book in trying to live free, according to um, what you've mapped out, it was their, what should their mindset be? Like, and I don't want to say what should their expectation be before getting into the book, but hey, I mean, like, it is what it is. Like, how can they prep? Because this is work. I'm not even kidding you. It is like you need to go buy a journal. Yes. <laughs> do the, do a chapter. That's true. Fill it out. Yeah. Let it breathe. Like, don't read the book so you can meet your book list for 2021. No, no. like do a chapter, let it breathe. And it's work. And mm. some things you discover is devastating. Because you're yes. unpacking. It's like going to therapy. But in this book, <laughs> <laughs> okay, have a therapist, great. You're going right. to do more. <laughs> right. No, I mean, it is. It's so interesting that you say that because yeah, as I was writing it, you know, it was like going to therapy because, you know, even in the introduction, you know, it's like the questions of like, you know, are whose life are you living? Mm. You know, are you really living the life that you're destined to live? Are you living the life that's expected of you? And so, you know, before a reader lives, reads live free, you know, I think that they got to get to the place where they're, they're they're sick and tired. They are sick and tired of living by what everybody else wants and expects of them, but not really living the life they know is deep down in their heart. They got to get sick and tired of feeling like they're putting out so much energy and effort and getting very little in return. They got to get sick and tired of feeling like they keep getting the short end of the stick in life. You know, that's what you got. That's where I, I have found those who read the book and they're in that position. It has a, just an exponential um, impact on their life because, you know, to your point, if you're just trying to read this book and check it off your, your monthly book list, you're going to miss it. You know, but if you're really looking for change in your life, the change that you and I want in our lives starts with change within. And so this is why I wanted to write this book because the idea, the concept living free, when I say live free, it means that you are not under the mental, uh, physical, or emotional control of anyone or anything. That you live by the expectations that you set, not by those imposed on you by others. So in order for someone to receive this book, they've got to get to the place where they're like, I need change, I need it now, and I, am, I, am, I no longer can continue the way that I am. I love that. And in the book, you dive into several sets of expectations, which again, I just, I thought was pretty dynamic so that it's not all lumped together and then you get overwhelmed. But you first start off talking about personal expectations. And so 
uh, I applaud you for starting with that one because I think we're hardest on ourselves, oh. regardless of everything else. Oh, um, yeah. Like you said, you know, you're like, I'm a perfectionist and I was evaluating myself and you're hitting all these milestones. You yeah. don't even know me. And I'm coming to the phone like, look, the weight is back there on that bookshelf. <laughs> I was part of your, you know, you've had impact on people from all over the world. Yeah. And even you struggle with this. So talk to me a little bit about um, personal expectations and, and just, we're not going to give too much away, but how, how do you see this holding people back? Because some of this stems from childhood. <laughs> Let's be real. Oh, most of it stems from childhood. So here, here's the thing. The personal expectations is really about saying, okay, who am I? Where do I want to go? And how do I begin to put myself on that path? So a lot of times it comes from, you know, our issues. Most of all of our issues are coming from childhood, right? Whatever trauma, tragedy, triumphs, whatever we experience, good and bad, uh, we are all indelibly marked and shaped by our childhood. Now, when it comes to personal expectations, a lot of times in my experience, we end up, you know, not really setting expectations for ourselves. meaning it doesn't mean we don't have expectations. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is a lot of our expectations have been influenced by everybody else. And we want to please our mother. We want to please our father. We want to please our friends. We want to please our cousin. We want to please our auntie. We want to please the church. We want whatever, you know, so we're trying to please. We want to please everybody at the expense of sometimes pleasing ourselves. So these personal expectations in the personal section is first and foremost for me to have just time with you as a person and ask some questions. You know, whose life are you living right now? Whose life are you living? Are you really living your life or are you living the life that everybody else is expecting of you? And those two things can be completely different. And that's why I wanted to write this, this section because before we can get into the cultural and uh, you know, the relational and the professional, we have to have a level set of what the foundation means to personally set expectations. I also, in this section, um, I, I basically define what it means to set expectations. When an expectation is set, it means we ask two questions. One, is the expectation realistic or unrealistic? How do we know? Is it within our control? If something is within our control, I argue it's realistic to expect. Now, this is when it gets very interesting because when you think about expectations first and foremost through, that, through the lens of the one question, now we can start to look at our life and say, oh, got it. Now I understand why I'm so frustrated because I'm trying to control stuff that's out of my control. Right. And I'm treating without, a, I'm, here, here's the crazy thing. We treat what's out of our control <laughs> as an expectation that if we don't hit it or we don't control it, then something's wrong with us, right? So you've got this great podcast. All right, wonderful. No matter how hard you try, you can't get people to listen to it. So if you put an expectation that I've got to have, you know, 10,000 downloads or 100,000 downloads by next month, and then you make an assessment as to what that will mean if you don't, <laughs> you, are put, you, you, you are skating on thin ice and the sun is coming out. Why? Because no matter how hard you try, you don't control who, turn, who tunes in to listen to this. You don't. What you control is the quality of your preparation, the quality of the program, the quality of your guests, the quality of your marketing and publicity. That's within your control. So you can have an expectation that I want to produce and create and host and market and publicize the type of show that can one day get these benchmarks. It all starts, though, with what's in your control right? And understanding what is and what isn't. So you can, you can set an expectation about your show. It just needs to be based in your control. So that's the first thing. The second thing you got to ask, is it spoken or unspoken? Meaning, is the expectation uh, communicated or uncommunicated? This is also an area where we get in a lot of trouble. Yes. Because we're expecting things of everybody else. We we, and, they, and we never asked them. Yep, there you go. We never said, hey, you know, if I do this for you, can I expect that you're going to do this for me? You know, or, hey, listen, uh, you know, it's so interesting. It's like I, I'm everything we talk about. I'm telling you, I'm living it and I go through it. So um, I just 
just moved, we just moved out of our place because I'm here in New Mexico producing a movie and Megan is in Atlanta. So we moved out of our place in LA because we just didn't need to have it. Right. Um, and so we'll figure out where we're going to live when we get back. So, um, you know, my mother and my aunt came down to help my brother. My older brother lives in LA. And so he had asked me a couple of times, hey, you need help, you need help, you need help. And the old me was thinking like, if you know I'm moving, <laughs> so if maybe you're just asking, do I need help? Because you want to let yourself off the hook with me saying, oh no, whatever, right? Because like, you know, we need help. So just show up, right? The old me would have made a judgment and gotten upset. But the, the me that lives free said, if I really need him, I have to tell him. I cannot have an unspoken expectation that he's supposed to know that I need him. I haven't actually told him I need him. And then I treat him as if I told him and get mad at him. Oh, I'm triggered right now. Woo, come on. Triggered. Come on. Right? <laughs> to my dog, you know, like. Right. You, you, you do, you know what I'm saying. The expectation that you won't bark during this interview. <laughs> Yes, that was so, that's so good. I mean, that is spot on. Right? Do you think overall society has a problem communicating? Do you think that technology and all these things have come into play where like the art of just communication is lost? Like what? what or, no, or no, 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 I don't. No, I don't think we, the art is lost. If anything, we're communicating more than ever before. Right. I mean, through, through text messages, through emails, through DMs, uh, through posts, through phone calls, you know, I mean, I think we're probably communicating more than, than we probably ever have in, in history. I think the thing is learning what real communication is, right. you know? So for me, when we're talking about these expectations, it's, it's literally saying, well, wait a minute, what I'm, I'm expecting this from this person, but have I actually asked them and then have I given them a chance to say, yes, you can expect it of me. No, you can't. Simple, but it's like, oh, right, right. Okay. So, so yes, we're communicating more than ever before, but we aren't always applying that communication in, in the direction we want to go. Right. right? So, so if you want to go in the direction of more joy in your life, more peace in your life, more clarity in your life, then you've got to direct your communication in that way. And that's why you got to set your expectations by asking these two questions. Are they realistic or unrealistic? Are they communicated or uncommunicated? And once you do, and, and if something is within your control and if it needs to be communicated, you've communicated it, now your expectation is set. And now that set expectation can be a foundation for your happiness and your freedom because you've done the work to set it. But if your expectation is unset, you will continuously find yourself unhappy. Wow. So let me, let me, let me ask you this. Cause yeah. I, I wasn't expecting all that. So my mind is just like, okay, you're speaking to me. I got to go back. I gotta, That's all I gotta right. Work. That's all right. That's why we're here. More work to do. Um, as I was reading this and I was thinking about, I'm, I'm in book clubs and then there's a lot of business coaches and a lot of people went heavy into like personal and professional development, especially during COVID. And they go into it with, so let's just say top of 2021, you go into your goal setting, right? And, or a lot of people do visualization exercises and they tell you to visualize beyond unrealistic things, right? Um, in order to manifest these things in your life. Where does expectation come into play with that? Like, just because I feel like it's almost like the opposite of what we're being taught um, we're being taught to go and visualize, like, even if it's not realistic, that you're going to be a, a multimillionaire and that you're going to have all these homes and that you're going to be this big wig. Well, at what point, how do you balance the two? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I don't want to get, you know, so super deep or metaphysical or whatever, you but okay. Right, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> there you do it. <laughs> It's like, I love it. Neurologically, love it. like how how does that work? Neuro, like brain. Cells, right. Like, right. You know, I, I was trying. That's what I struggled with. Sure. In, so, that, so. in that first bit of the book. 
Okay, great, 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 great question, great inquiry. I love it. So when we talk about, you know, when you're talking about manifestation, you know, or, or visualization, right, uh, connected to that is a vibration, right? So, you know, there's a lot of theories and thoughts that, you know, even in the Bible, according to your faith, be it unto you. So at what level you vibrate, you are able to then receive on that level. So your vibration, there's a connection between your vibration and your manifestation. So a lot of times what happens though, is that uh, when you talk about, oh, you know, visualizing being a millionaire and visualizing all these houses, and, but those things never, never happen. Why? Why? Because we actually don't have an expectation to support the vibration. And as a result, there's no manifestation. Ooh, say that one more time. <laughs> we don't have an expectation <laughs> to support the vibration. And as a result, there's no manifestation. Oh, that's amazing. So, so let me unpack that. So the expectation is a strong belief that something will happen in the future. Yes. Right? That's what it means. So how do I get to a place where I actually have a strong belief about something? I have to build confidence in my life yep. that gives me more support for that belief. Right. So, yeah. so, so for example, you know, since you talked about, you know, money and whatnot. So, you know, um, uh, you know, I came, you know, when I was a child, we were on welfare. Right. Uh, my father died when I was nine years old. Uh, he died of a heart attack at 36. My mother didn't have enough money for my brothers and my older brother, my younger brother. I'm the middle child of three boys. We were on welfare. We wore hand-me-downs, you know, to school. I mean, I remember, uh, you know, uh, you know, powdered milk. All right. And, uh, you know, generic cereal with no, you know, no labels. It's just straight from the government. Yeah. I remember, you know, uh, the, everything that we, the beans and the cheese and all of it. Right. So as I grew into, you know, the entertainment business and started, you know, my path in Hollywood, um, while I had a belief, while I had a, a, a desire, right, I wanted to manifest more money, I had a belief system that worked against that. Yes. Oh, so, so, yes. So, 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 so here's the truth. Here's the truth. It, you, it, it, you can work on these manifestations all day. If it's not supported by a belief, it will never happen. So, so the way that I built a stronger belief about manifesting more money was to get into a, a stronger confidence about who I was and my offering to the world. And so what I mean by that is that the more that I progressed in my career, the more that I got more confidence in myself. And the more I became in, got into an awareness of my value, I said, oh, okay, oh, got it. So I do have what it takes to make it. You know, I, I am successful. I can get movies made. Oh, okay. So the more that I built that confidence, the strength of my belief increased. So then my expectation, right, of like, okay, what's in my control? What's in my control is my attitude. What's in my control is my disposition. What's in my control is how I negotiate. What's in my control is not settling for less. So the more that I set my expectation, then I was able to have a vibration that then led to the manifestation. So now, you know, what I receive is much greater than what I was receiving at the beginning of my career, not just because I've progressed, but because I've gotten, I've been able to live in a higher manifestation. When you say, according to your faith, according to your faith, right? Be it unto you. That's real. It's, it's really the code to what we're talking about, right? But a lot of times we're having faith in something we don't actually believe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's almost like rubbing the genie. I just want to, I just want to have all these visualizations and hopefully one of them will come true. No, sorry. If you want to rub a genie, you got to go to Aladdin and be in the movies for that. That ain't that is not real. Right. That is not real. And I think that's when people, you know, again, I know years ago, people were into the secret and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and I think there are elements of that that, you know, are based in some reality. But I think where people went wrong with it was thinking that, oh, I can just think about anything and, you know, that's going to happen. And then it didn't happen. People got upset. Right. It's my expectation. Oh, I expected Oh, I could just do the secret. I could just sit here all day and think, 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 and stuff's gonna happen. And nothing happened. Bills piled up. You know, I didn't get the house. I didn't get no car. Didn't even get a job. I lost my job. The secret doesn't work, right? Because the expectation that it was gonna be the fit, the be end all, be all. No, no, no. 
Anything external is never going to be the answer to what's internal. In order for us to get to a level of manifestation where those things can happen, they have to be supported by that expectation, which is a strong belief. And how do we build our belief system? By building more confidence. You know, you look at someone, you know, like an Oprah or a Tyler Perry, the, the, the rules are no different for them than they are for anybody else. How are they able to manifest on that level? Because they believe on that level. They have confidence on that level. So, you know, it's like, so it's like, oh yeah, this is just how I live. No problem. It's like, no big deal. Okay, great. Yeah, this is how I live. I live this way. I'm a billionaire. This is what I got. What? It's just like, hey, yeah, right. Okay, cool. Now I can offer more service. It is what it is, right? You know, but some of us like, oh man, am I worthy of a billion dollars? How do I, uh, you know? And then, and then, we aren't actually living in a way, right? So, so what I mean by that, again, long answer to your question. I did not mean to go this down this is, rabbit hole. No, this, is, this is great because I'm telling you, I was reading it like I'm having an internal conflict. Yes. Okay, and good, good, good. Out. <laughs> good, good. So, so with the book, and the reason why I wrote the book is that, you know, I really want to give people more confidence to be able to operate more in their gifting, right? So that, that there's a, it's, it's like, I don't want you to wish, oh, I wish. No, I want you to know. It's a total, there's a difference between knowing who we are and what's going to happen and then allowing the time it's required for that to happen. There's a total difference in how I live my life when I know versus when I wish. When we wish, we don't actually believe. We're playing this, we're playing spiritual lotto. Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish one day. Versus I know. And, and because I know, it, it impacts how I live. So I'm not living based on a wish, which means, you know, some days I may you may if you if you're living on a wish, some days you may be disciplined, some days you may be not, some days you get up and you're happy, some days you're not. But when you know. You get up with intent. Right. You live with purpose. You know, again, we talk about, let's use your podcast as an example. Again, I, I don't know how big it is or isn't. I have no idea. I don't, I don't even know what your aspirations are for it. I'm assuming you have some. But if you know that you've got a dope podcast and you are a dope host, that's very different than saying, oh, well, I started this podcast and I wish it'll work. And, you know, I wish people would see me as a host. Like those are two different energies. And one energy is not going to get you what you want, and the other will get you closer to it. Now, what it's going to look like, that's the part we got to surrender. Right. right? You, you can know you have the dopest podcast on the planet, and you're the dopest podcast host, and you want the podcast to grow. Great. I know these things will happen. How it will look, I've got I've to relax because that's out of my control. Right? That in order to have the, the manifestation... It's got to be supported by the vibration, which has to be supported by the expectation. If I'm trying to do things that are out of my control, my expectation is off. So it's a vibration, so it's a manifestation, right? So what's in my control is the knowing. What's in my control is the discipline. What's in my control is my attitude, right? Because that attitude is connected to the vibration, right? right? If my attitude, because here's here, why, why is our vibration go up and down? Because it's sometimes we tether it to uh, uh, well, it hasn't happened yet on the uncertainty of what we, we want to know, but it hasn't happened yet. So oh, I'm feeling down today. No, oh, I don't know. This is false hope. What am I doing? It ain't ever going to work. Right. So then our vibration just goes straight into the toilet, you know, versus saying, you know what? I know it. And guess what? In a moment when I'm starting to, you know, get a little uncertain, I'm just going to step back from everything. I'm going to take a run. I'm going to take a walk. I'm just going to, you know, do some push ups. I just got to get my mind off. It. I'm thinking too much. I'm thinking too much. I just got to get in the knowing because when I'm in the knowing, I know what that feels like. And when I feel right and my expectation is set, then my vibration is right. And I can guarantee whatever's supposed to manifest will. So long answer perfect. to perfect. your question. Oh, perfect. Just I'm telling you, I was like, why am I struggling with this one thing? Like maybe it's because I just did goals, right? And then you set all these goals and then I'm going through meditation training right now for my certification. So we deal with vibrations and energy and relax and release and all these things and visualization. And so I'm reading your book and I'm like, how, how can we marry 
all of these together so that they're not in conflict but that they make sense that makes sense nice that makes okay. sense so I'm, <laughs> I'm very happy with that answer what i do want to talk about i know we're, we're limited on time but you you do talk about cultural expectations and we were talking about faith i want to dive a little bit into um maybe the cultural the expectations of the church um, I feel like a lot of people right now are struggling faith-wise, just given everything that's going on um, in the world. They don't know how to feel. You've got some people that are avoiding therapy because maybe Jesus and God, they're, they're going to save everything, right? Um, and then you have others that are, like for myself, I was going through meditation and I had people culturally telling me like that that was linked to like demonic energy. And I'm like, really? Because mm -hmm. I want to live to my highest being <laughs> so what how are, are these cultural expectations not allowing us to live free as well and what do we need to evaluate mm -hmm. so so here's what we have to evaluate especially when you talk about culture specifically when you talk about coming from communities of faith i was raised i've been raised in a community of faith you know i've been a christian all my life been in the church all my life um what i know is that if someone doesn't feel free, they can't support you in you becoming free. If someone feels judged, they are more than likely going to judge you. If someone feels held back, inadvertently, they may try to hold you back. So when you think about that in the context of you know, communities of faith, in my experience, what should be a community that is the most loving and the most liberated end up becoming the most judgmental and uh, the, the most uh, um, uh, critical. Why? Because we, a lot of times um, we, we, you know, especially talking about being Christian, we talk about the love of Jesus, right? And the love of God as the way to get people to convert, to give their life to Jesus, right? So I'm going to give my life to Jesus. He is my savior. I'll be washed of my sins and I will walk with him uh, eternally. Great that we get them into the, the body of Christ, so to speak, through the power of love. Right. But then we socialize them out of love and into religion. Mm -hmm. You can't say this, you can't say that, you can't wear this, you can't wear that, you can't go here, you can't do that, right? So what gets them in the door is love, but then we socialize them through judgment, through uh, ridicule, through at times hate. Uh, and so in my experience, one of the reasons why I wrote this book is because, you know, again, I was raised in the, in the, in the church and I wanted to go to Hollywood. You know, I wanted to make movies. And a lot of people in my church community were like, no, don't do that. It's Sodom and Gomorrah, it's the devil's playground. You're gonna lose your faith. You know, you're gonna have to compromise your faith. And so I was like, oh, got it. So you're telling me from the choices you've had to make. And because you had dreams that you did not, um, wait, hold on, can you hear me? Yeah. Wait, uh oh, hold on, hold on one second. Sorry, something happened with my, my okay. Okay, sorry, I'm just have technical glitch here. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, now I can hear you. For some reason, it was trying to switch over to my AirPods, which are <laughs> not open. Okay. So, so, so here's the thing. In the church, it's like, okay, if, if I feel, right, if I feel like, oh, you know what? As Devon, I'm going to allow my life to be completely dictated by your experience, then I'm going to become a version of what's comfortable for you, not the version of who I am. And there's a scripture that says, Jesus says, you know, who the sun sets free is free indeed. That scripture is talking about from the power of sin. But the idea that the ultimate penalty is death, the wages of sin is death. So if Jesus has freed us from sin, why then would I allow myself to be in a prison of your thoughts and your, ideas and your opinions? That's all right. What's up, little man? Um, uh, um, why would I allow myself to be in a prison of your thoughts and your opinions? You know, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Why would I not do it? Because I, I have to go experience for myself. And so in my experience, Leah, this is when, you know, I wrote this book for everybody, but I really pray those in the church catch it because we are called to love. 
and we are called to live. And you have got to experience, okay, well, what is meditation? I don't know. Let me go figure it out. Let me decide for me if it is demonic, if it is of God, where does it fit? I will never know unless I go do some investigation for myself. And guess what? God is God. He can handle my investigation. He can handle my journey. The, the people in the church may not be able to, but guess what? They don't have a cross to put me on. They don't have a grave to put me in, period. They don't have a heaven to take me to. So we got to get to the place where we are living so free that we offer love to those who aren't free yet. So when people, I mean, I got, I got, I have, there are people right now who have never met, who have done YouTube videos against me and all these things. I was like, how, just like, just even just hearing you speak about it. I'm like, for someone that gives so much to the world, I, I, I wonder how you kind of relax and release all of this. Cause it's like you and Megan could be doing something at the church <laughs> for the church. Right. And then I'm like, do you avoid the comments? And then you go in the comments and it's like, y'all are missing the message. Yeah. You know, you listen, hear what was coming out of his mouth. And it's just like, yeah, but it's okay though. It's all right. Because again, like, like if, if I'm free and you're free, that freedom energetically causes disruption for those who are not. That's true. Very true. So it's distortion. So, so if someone's not free and they're like, like, no, it's got to be this way. And they hear what I'm saying, which is on a different vibration. It's on a different level. It's going to, the sound's going to get distorted. It's like being on a radio station and you can't quite hear, not because the broadcast isn't clear, it's that the reception that that you aren't on, you aren't quite tuned in. So the broadcaster sounds clear, but the way you may hear it sounds distorted. So as a result, you comment based on the distortion. But if you were in the booth with the broadcaster or you tuned in to that right station, you'd be able to hear it clearly. So I look at it and I offer love. You know, for those that, that you know, have the comments or whatever, so it's okay. Like, hey, guess what? If anything, it's com it's confirmation that, you know, we're doing the right thing because, you know, you I've never experienced someone make an impact in the world without, you know, the criticism that goes along with it. So, you know, it's expected. And because it's expected, it allows me to deal with it. That's awesome. That's such a good outlook. And I just think it's just a resonating theme of just release, release, release. You have yeah, to you got to do it. We got to do it. <laughs> so, like moving along, we, you talked about cultural. Uh, I really wanted to talk about that aspect of the church. You also in the book talk about cancel culture, which is like so relevant right now, but y'all just don't have to go get the book because um, I want to get to these relational expectations. Um, so you move from that section into relational expectations with one another. Um, and then you hit on an expectation ship, which I thought like that was, a very interesting word about <laughs> our expectations that we kind of place within our relationships that could be causing us some grief and oh, some yeah. stress. So oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I put this in, it. Yeah, I put this in the book, and this is why I'm so excited about you know this book and, and believing that it's going to change people's lives because it it can shine a light to say, oh wait a minute, I'm not in a friendship, right? Or I'm not even in a relationship. I'm in an expectation ship. <laughs> what that means is as long as I do what's expected, the benefits of the friendship or relationship are available to me. As long as I do what they expect me to do, when they expect me to do it, we're good. But heaven forbid I step out of their expectation. Oh, wait a minute. The phone calls don't get returned. The text messages, you know, uh, go unread. You know, there's, there's friction. But then all of a sudden I get back to doing what they want me to do. Oh, hey, hey, right? And then also sometimes we can be the ones that have these expectations of everybody else. Sure. And then they don't meet our expectation and we write them off. Oh, I'm never calling that person again. I'm not texting that person, right? Cause I did this for them and then they didn't do this for me, right? No, 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 no. If you love someone, you set them free. I don't want you to do anything for me out of duress. I want you to do it cause it was in your heart. So as a, from a friendship or a relationship, if we can do that because we're both free and we make the choice to contribute to each other in a positive way, great. 
or we use our communication. Hey, can I expect this from you? Can I expect that from you? And you give the other person the okay to say it or to do it. But I wrote that in the book because that expectation shift, sometimes, you know, we can find ourselves in having so many of them, yes. not realizing that we don't actually have real friendships. Ooh. Yeah. That's tough. <laughs> yeah, that is. That's tough. And I, I will be honest with you, I have let quite a low vibrating people go, quite a few go. <laughs> um, during this time just because i'm like you know i don't have to have the capacity to deal with this you know like i'm going to release <laughs> any of the negativity and like you said maybe i had an expectation for that person to change That's right. or because you've been my friend for however many years i'm expecting you know we have these expectations for each other without realizing like man this pandemic has pushed me on a growth path to something higher and you just can't go there with me and it's okay and the moment i started releasing all these people it was almost like you know just releasing like removing anchors i was able to just kind of sail away and move yeah. and it was just, so i just think that all of these pieces together are so important <laughs> like I, I mean i've just imagined because i mean it's your book you just must feel like you're just like floating you're just like oxygen like in the air Hey, I just, I wrote it and, you know, just, I mean, the hardest part about a book, honestly, is not even the writing. It's just the getting it to the world, you know, and letting people know that it's here and what it is. And because I believe anyone who reads it, their life will change in a positive way. I believe that. So, you know, uh, my greatest, uh, you know, hope is that, uh, you know, it'll get to as many people as it possibly can. And it will. It'll be a New York Times bestseller, and then we'll yeah. just have to update the caption. Like, now, all right, let's go. I love it. I love it. I'm with you. I'm with you. And then the last section is professional. So I, I kind of like in that section with the same mindset of our personal expectations, but professional can be a little bit different. You talk again about being realistic. So, um, is there anything within our professional expectations, especially for this uh, body of listeners, that? you want to, you feel led to speak about that you talk about in the book that you're seeing as like a, maybe a theme within the pandemic? Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, definitely. I, I have a whole section. I have chapters worth of information uh, for anyone looking to know and learn how to set your professional expectations, which I believe will um, get you more success in your career and in your job. Uh, one of the things that I talk about, you know, in the professional expectation section of this book, is about the process is the result. So often we think the result is the result, but it's really about the process. Why is that important? Because so you talk about people who've been navigating the, you know, the job market in the pandemic. So a lot of times, you know, the result is I want a job. I need a job or I want a better job. That's the result I'm looking for. No problem at all. Nothing wrong, wrong with wanting that result. However, if someone obsesses over the result, which they don't control, at the expense of not focusing on the process, which they do control, they may never actually get the result they seek. So in the case of wanting the job or a better job, what is the process in terms of if you, let's say you're unemployed and you want a job, what's the, what's the process you can control? How you, how you navigate LinkedIn, how many resumes you're submitting on a daily basis, who, how many leads you're following up on, who you're asking for, you know, help and recommendations and referrals, you know, what sort of job development can you do independently, you know, whether it's, hey, if you don't have the money for, you know, online classes, you know, go doing YouTube, there's so much YouTube classes that you can take for free. What are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis to better yourself professionally and to invest in your job search? The more you put into your process, you ultimately are going to get the result. Now, let's say you're in a job and you're looking to get promoted. Now, this is something that's very important. The promotion is out of your control. Right. How? Because you, unless you're the CEO, you don't actually have the ability to give yourself the promotion. So if you're seeking a promotion or an advancement in your job, what do you control? You can control your attitude. You can control your productivity. You can control what type of a colleague you are. You can control how you make your boss's life easier. You can control how well you do your job. You can control your excellence. There's so much in your control. And in my experience, 
when you focus on those things, whether you get promoted at the current job or another job, you know, come seeking you out, you're going to get where you want to be because you put so much time in the process. Let's say you're looking to change a job. Okay, nothing wrong with that, but do me a favor. If you are currently taking a check, remember every time that check is direct deposited, it comes with an expectation. And if you are not meeting the expectations of the check you are getting, it is, it is crazy for you to expect that a better job or a better situation is coming. Treat the current job like it's the job you want and the job you want will be yours soon enough. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a dead end job. You could hate it. If you hate it so much, quit. But do not do a disservice to yourself by rendering service less than you are capable of with the excuse, I'm over this job. If you're over it, leave. But as long as you get that check, don't just meet the expectation, work on exceeding it. Last thing I'll say about professional, you do not get promoted by meeting expectations. That's the job. You're being paid to meet an expectation. You position yourself for promotion and advancement in your career because you exceed expectations. You learn what is expected of me in this position. What does my boss expect of me? And let me not only work to meet it, but let me do everything I can to exceed it. Every professional advancement that I've had in the entertainment business, going from unpaid intern to, to paid intern, to uh, assistant, to junior executive, to more senior executive at, at uh, Columbia Pictures, to now running my own production company and having deals with major studios all across the business. That progression has come because at every step, I'm trying to exceed expectations at every step. How can I offer more service? How can I be more committed? How can I go the extra mile? Not because I need to prove myself to myself. I know who I am. I'm offering this service because I recognize that the, the exceeding the expectation is what's gonna give me what I want, which is the advancement. So anyone listening or watching, you gotta make yourself a committee of one. I am going to make a commitment to exceed expectations wherever I am, professionally. It's different when we're talking about personal, cultural, and relational expectations, but professionally, because they're an exchange of money, that exchange of money means now you're accountable. When you check, when you go ahead and spend that direct deposit, it means you said yes to the expectation. If you don't want the expectation, give the money back, period. But as long as you take that check, you got to say, all right, I don't want to just meet expectations. I want to exceed them. And I guarantee if you, if you make yourself a committee of one to exceed professional expectations, you're good. You're good. You're going, you're going to be, I promise you, you'll be just fine. I love that. That was amazing. I'm like, okay, I'm going to just rewatch some of this for myself. <laughs> now I love I'm like, it. Tired, like I gotta get back to work. Um, but no, this was, this was amazing. I feel like this, your book live free is just total mindset shift. Mm, and like I was saying, you're just gonna be unpacking, it's an onion. You're just gonna be pulling back layers and layers and layers, things that you didn't even know about yourself, um, yeah. rediscovering things about yourself, rediscovering what you like, what you love, who you wanna be around, who you don't wanna be around. And to your point, then reaching a point to where you feel free, you reach a point of liberation. And now you can move towards purpose, which I think at the end of the day is what all of us desire as human beings, or hopefully we do. Um, and that's God's intention for each and every one of us. So I'm so excited. I, I, I mean, just hearing you speak, I'm like, I got to do a book club with this now. <laughs> I love so it. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, Thank well, you. we got to figure out, I'm going to start a book club so everybody can, so we can all live free. I love it. Give you an update. Let's but do it. Keep me posted. What, what's next? What's new? Anything else you want to let the audience know before we... Um, yeah, no, I mean, you know, this is it, you know, it's really about the book. I mean, I'm getting ready to start production on my next movie. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm here in New Mexico working on that and, um, you know, but very passionate about this message and just want everybody to hopefully, um, you know, be blessed by it. Well, thank you so much, you guys on sale, May the 4th, go and buy it, go to his website, go to Amazon. You guys know what to do. It'll be in the caption. If you like this episode, subscribe, rate, and review. Reach out to Devon. He's very active on social media. So please take snippets, tag him, and yeah. tag PR Yourself Podcast on 
Instagram. Thank you, Devon, for being such an amazing guest. And we wish you nothing but the best. God bless you. God bless you too. Thank you, Leah. Until next time. Thank you. For sure. Bye.